So, Labour have won the uh, general election, getting 35% of the votes. What does this mean for you? Is it good news? Is it bad news? And most importantly, what should you, could you, what should you be doing it about it now? So, in terms of what Labour have actually said so far, well, at the minute, they've not said a great deal. They've said a couple of different things. So, the first one is we're looking at about autumn time for the first budget which is you know they're going to give them a couple of months to actually think things through what are they going to do and it's really autumn time where we're going to see a lot of the changes but you can't wait into autumn because you know if they um, put a budget for an autumn it could be april before things kick in so you need to start looking at how you can plan now so you're ready for it the first things that they've said is kind of what they what they will be keeping the same so they've said that there shouldn't be any changes to income tax national insurance and vat uh, so all those rates should say the same, you know, it's pretty pretty standard, pretty normal stuff there. One thing they are pretty likely to go ahead with is the VAT increase. So starting to make private school fees subject to VAT. What can you do about this now? Well, one great thing that you can do is potentially prepay the school fees. Uh, we're seeing a lot of our clients do a lot of schools offering that, where you can pay now for the next couple of years so they do not have to charge VAT on those school fees. That's one thing you can do. They're also looking at, it's not going to apply to anybody watching this, but a windfall tax on oil and gas. Um, so that's not going to be good news for guys in those sectors. But one thing that they haven't done is they've not ruled out changes to some pension uh, tax release and also the capital gains tax. I know capital gains tax is a massive one. There have been talks with Labour before about potentially changing the capital gains tax rates to be in line with income tax. Typically, most people pay income uh, capital gains tax at a variety of rates, 10%, 20% uh, for non-residential property gains or 10 or 20, uh, 18 or 24% for, for residential property gains and changing them in line with income tax, so 20%, 40%, 45%. And if they go ahead with that, that would be massive, especially for the private renter sector, especially for landlords who are selling properties because most people's capital gains tax bills would double overnight. So that's definitely not good news. They're also going to tighten the the changes, the most recent changes to remittance basis and the whole non-DOM tax regime. Labour are going to tighten some of the uh, kind of gateway provisions that, that were going to be allow people to still have some tax benefits in the UK for a number of years. They're going to tighten those up, so it's certainly bad news for people that have that non-DOM status. Um, and kind of one thing, this is where you kind of look in wider picture now. I was able to see online that you know they might even change the ISA allowance. So we've got here Resolution Foundation, which is a labour policy think tank. Basically, the HMRC could save about a billion pounds a year by restricting the ISA allowance. Currently, ISAs, for the value in ISA is unrestricted. You could put your £20,000 a year. Wherever it goes to, it goes to. Whereas they've kind of purported the idea, proposed the idea, that if they capped it at £100,000 lifetime limit, that could save them a billion pounds. And of course... Some people have more than £100,000 uh, in an ISA, but a lot of people don't. So this could be quite an easy policy to put in, a tax change to put in. That shouldn't annoy too many voters as we come up to the next general election. Other kind of things wider afield, potentially changing to put a cap on it or completely scrapping agricultural and business property relief. Massively valuable inheritance tax relief there. Um, you know, agriculture for people that are farming, don't have to sell the business when um, there's a change uh, in ownership or on the death. Same with business property relief as well. It does allow the family to keep the business effectively because you usually get 100% relief. So it allows the business to stay in the family rather than it getting sold and destroyed, which is usually the case if you don't get that kind of relief. You need to raise the money from somewhere to pay the 40% inheritance tax. You have no choice but to sell or certainly dilute the family's ownership in the business. So overall, we don't know too much at the minute, so we really need to kind of think, okay, how can we prepare ourselves? So one of the big changes, capital gains tax. It might be worth, I know a lot of our clients and a lot of the private rented sector already have started selling off investment properties, not least because of the capital gains tax changes that may take place, but Labour's love for renters and how they're going to change the whole thing, you know, all the uh, right to buy, they did their three years, and loads of different crazy ideas that have come out of Labour, which will be damaging to the private rented sector and ultimately make property investment not that attractive because of the enhanced rights that tenants would get, which are absolutely crazy. Um, so definitely looking to sell and exit properties, but really for most people, 
if these changes that do come in or the way that the country's run with Labour and everything else that they're going to change, um, you know, cutting NATO spending and everything else, the UK probably isn't going to be a great place to live um, because of the way that they'll be running it. So what can you do about it? Well, the good news is you can move. So as you know, people that follow the channel, I've relocated to Dubai. Uh, run the businesses from Dubai, spend a lot of time in Dubai, still spend some time in the UK, but definitely that's one thing that you could look at doing. We've got tons of other videos on this about relocating to different countries, but now with Labour coming in, now with there being uncertainty in a tax landscape, now is the time to look at you, where you are, look at what you want to achieve, and basically consider if the UK is still the best option for you, because most people we speak to, it isn't. There's hardly any reason to stay in the UK. So why are you still here? Why are you still paying, you know, 50, 60 percent in taxes in the UK when you could potentially be living in Dubai paying a zero percent tax? If you want to find out more, just click the link in the comments below and book a call with myself or one of the team. Cheers. Bye for now.